the last few lectures, uh, we discussed about the inelastic seismic response analysis of structures. We started with uh, the inelastic uh, seismic response analysis for single degree of freedom system. Uh, then uh, how it is extended for a multi degree freedom system was discussed. After that, we uh, discussed the effect of the bilinear interaction on yielding and how it is uh, included in the inelastic seismic response analysis of structures. The concepts were uh, then utilized uh, for the analysis of 2D frame and 3D frames. Uh, in 2D and 3D frames, we considered again uh, two cases. In the first case, uh, the beams were strong and columns were weak. Therefore, the plastic hinges uh, that occur, uh, they are in the ends or at the ends of the columns. And we uh, generally assume the beam to be rigid in the sense that we make the frame a shear frame. Uh, for the case when the uh, beam is weak and the columns are strong, then the plastic hinges are formed in the beams. Uh, to treat that case is relatively easier compared to the case when the columns are, are yielding in the case of a 3D frame because uh, there one has to take into consideration the effect of the bilinear interaction on yielding. Only thing uh, uh, that is to be considered for the case uh, of weak beam uh, strong column system uh, is that after uh, the yield has taken place at a particular cross section in the beam, and then from the uh, incremental displacement, we have to compute also the incremental rotation. Uh, with the help of that only, we can find out the bending moment at a particular cross section and check whether uh, it is exceeding the value of MP or not. Uh, if it exceeds the value, uh, then another thing that you have to compute is the what is the uh, rotational velocity at the plastic hinges and also the amount of rotation. Uh, after that, we uh, discussed a, a very important topic called the pushover analysis in earthquake uh, engineering. The pushover analysis is, uh, is a very a good equivalent static nonlinear analysis of structures for earthquake. With the help of pushover analysis, we try to understand the inelastic behavior of the structure after the yielding during the earthquake and also uh, try to uh, see the performance levels of the structure uh, at, uh, at different stages of the earthquake loading. And pushover analysis uh, is uh, extremely used for uh, most of the cases where uh, we uh, have a situation uh, the, uh, where the structure is subjected to a lateral uh, dynamic loading. Uh, and because of that, the structure goes into uh, the inelastic uh, zone. After this, uh, we want to discuss now uh, two very important aspects in earthquake analysis and design. They are the ductility and inelastic spectrum. I have defined what ductility is before. So, let me define it, it again. Ductility is uh, for a single degree freedom system is defined as the maximum displacement that the structure undergoes during earthquake divided by the yield displacement. So, that is uh, the definition of the ductility 
or in other words after the yielding uh, how much the structure can deform uh, is a measure of the ductility. And in the seismic design of structures, uh, we uh, design the structures to have enough ductility. I mentioned this in connection with the uh, design philosophy that we have. Uh, in the seismic design philosophy, we have got three very important criteria that is uh, the stiffness, strength and ductility. So, stiffness provides uh, the resistance uh, to the earthquake forces in the elastic zone. Uh, the strength denoted by the yield of the yield resistance of the element uh, that decides uh, when the element goes into the inelastic range. And ductility uh, denotes how much the uh, element can deform beyond yielding. Ductility detailing uh, of reinforcement is a very crucial issue in the structural drawings. At every joint, these structures must be uh, detailed properly for earthquake. And uh, so far as the reinforced concrete structure is concerned, there are guidelines given in all codes uh, how one can provide the adequate ductility by way of reinforcement detailing. So, we will uh, look into uh, this aspect of ductility uh, in uh, earthquake resistant design of structures. Along with that, uh, we will discuss a, another important aspect in earthquake resistant design that is the inelastic response spectrum. And we will see how inelastic response spectrum differs from the elastic response spectrum uh, that we have discussed already, how we, we one can construct an inelastic response spectrum from the elastic response spectrum and what are the uses of inelastic response spectrum. As I told you a structure is designed uh, for a load uh, less than the uh, uh, load which the structure experiences during the design earthquake and uh, how the equivalent static lateral load uh, is calculated using seismic coefficient method or response spectrum method of analysis. The for both cases the load that is computed or the base shear that is computed is divided by a reduction factor r so that the effective loading on the structure is reduced. The typical values of r that are considered is uh, between 3 to 4 for ordinary kinds of structures. Uh, for uh, different kinds of structures, however, the code specifies the values of the reduction factor that is to be taken. Uh, because of this reduction factor, a reduced load is uh, uh, acting on the structure and uh, we analyze the structures for that reduced load. As a result of that, uh, in the case of the actual earthquake, the all the structures that we design they undergo inelastic excursion that is it goes beyond the yield limit. Uh, different elements uh, go into the yield limit uh, to different extent and therefore, there is a specific ductility demand uh, uh, which is imposed on the structure uh, not as a overall ductility demand but a ductility demand which varies from element to element. To cater to all the uh, ductility demands imposed by the earthquake uh, on different elements uh, is very difficult task, but uh, we try to uh, assess what is the uh, ductility demand as such on the structure 
and for that pushover analysis is uh, one of the uh, very important analysis technique by way of which we convert a structure into a an equivalent single degree freedom system and look into the ductility demand imposed on that uh, equivalent single degree freedom system. This is done uh, by way of considering that the structure as if is uh, vibrating only in the first mode. But uh, that gives us a an idea about the ductility demand and that uh, is imposed on the structure as a whole or uh, because of the earthquake. For uh, finding out the ductility uh, demand for each element, one has to carry out a nonlinear uh, dynamic analysis or a nonlinear seismic analysis of the uh, structure, find out the maximum uh, displacements or deformations that take place in individual members, divide them by the elast uh, or the yield or deformation or yield displacement and find out the ductility for each uh, member. So, we uh, uh, want to see now how this ductility is uh, obtained for a, a structure. Uh, element wise uh, as well as uh, as a, a single degree freedom system or what we call as overall ductility of the structure. The structure will undergo yielding uh, if it is subjected to the expected design of earthquake uh, that is what I told you before. The behavior will depend upon the force deformation characteristics of the section. So, that is uh, one of the again important input for the analysis. We have to provide the load deformation behavior for uh, each of the elements of the structures that is uh, the cross sections where the where we expect the plastic hinges uh, to form. For those cross sections we provide uh, a load deformation characteristics or moment rotation characteristics. Uh, from the uh, designed cross section. The maximum displacements and deformations of the structure are expected to be greater than the yield displacements and that is uh, that gives rise to the concept of uh, ductility. However, there could be situation where the maximum displacement or deformation in a structure may become uh, less than the yield displacement that kind of scenario uh, can also happen. How much the structure will deform beyond the yield limit depends upon the ductility. Ductility factor is defined as the e equation 6.35a that is mu is equal to x m by x y where x m is the maximum displacement and x y is the yield displacement and this is defined for a single degree of freedom system. For explaining uh, the concept of ductility and understanding uh, how one can understand uh, the effect of ductility uh, on the structure, uh, we consider two single degree of freedom system, one is a elastoplastic system, other is a, a corresponding elastic system. So, that is shown in this figure. So, this is one system that is the elastoplastic system. The corresponding elastic system uh, is this one that means, uh, in the elastic range uh, both of them has the same stiffness, but for the elastoplastic system after the yield force the system moves on this horizontal line whereas in the elastic system it continues to move on this uh, same 
uh, inclined uh, line representing the stiffness of the system. We have uh, these uh, definitions of the displacement here, say x m is the maximum displacement that can take place in the single degree freedom system, x y is the yield displacement that is, uh, that is well defined with the help of the yield force and the stiffness of the system and x0 is a displacement for a force of level f0 applied to the structure and or, or the single degree freedom system and it is assumed that the uh, single degree of freedom system is behaving as a elastic system. So, beyond yielding in an elastic equivalent or a corresponding elastic single degree of freedom system, the value of x0 will be obtained through the stiffness of the system and we will have for a particular value of f0 the displacement as x0. In order to make uh, the formulations and the uh, necessary curves for understanding ductility, we make certain parameters or introduce certain parameters uh, into the analysis procedure. Uh, first uh, parameter is a bar y, uh, a bar y is a non-dimensional yield force defined by f y divided by f 0 that is f y is the maximum force that can occur in the elastoplastic system and f 0 is the maximum force that is uh, developed if that particular f 0 system were behaving as an elastic uh, system and this is equal to x y by x 0 uh, which is shown in earlier figure. So, this uh, f y by f 0 will be equal to x uh, x y by x 0. Now, uh, inverse of f bar y is called a factor which may be a called as a elast uh, reduction uh, factor and this reduction factor r y is simply the inverse of f bar y that is r y is equal to 2 means that the strength of the exterior system is halved compared to the elastic system. That means on this uh, ratio between f y by f 0 will be equal to half. Now, with uh, the this equation 6.35b, uh, one can write down another equation uh, which is uh, given in 6.36 uh, that is x bar x m by x 0 that is the maximum displacement that can take place in the elastoplastic system divided by the maximum displacement that can take place in the corresponding elastic system that can be written as mu times f bar y uh, using this manipulation and this can be finally written as mu divided by r y. So, this particular relationship is very useful and will be uh, later on uh, used for drawing certain curves and understanding uh, the meanings of those curves. Uh, we can see here that the maximum displacement that takes place uh, for the elastoplastic system divided by corresponding uh, maximum displacement in the elastic uh, system that is finally uh, written as mu divided by r y or the ductility divided by the reduction factor. Uh, therefore, uh, if one knows the value of say mu, why uh, mu is given and x m is known, 
x0 is known, then one can find out what is the corresponding reduction factor. Similarly, if reduction factor is given and xm and x0 is given, then one can find what is the ductility. Now, with the above definitions, the equation motion of motion of single degree of freedom system is given by equation 6.37. These uh, they are x double dot, this is double dot, this is a single dot and uh, we write down uh, here in since it is not a nonlinear system or uh, it is not linear system, we have uh, this expression and this expression means that a bar y x comma x that is uh, x dot that is a bar y is a function of both displacement and velocity multiplied by omega n square multiplied by x y where a bar x x dot is written as simple f x dot divided by f y. The entire thing is written in this particular fashion because of a certain reason which will be clear little later. But here in fact one should have written straight away f x comma x dot that is uh, we have the acceleration, we have uh, the damping term and then we have here a function that means uh, instead of writing k x for the linear system, one should write down a, a function uh, of x and x dot uh, which is a general function showing the resistance of the structure at different stages of loading including the elastic phase and the inelastic phase. Uh, this is uh, equal to minus x double dot g. Now, f x uh, y uh, f x s dot is the general function. Uh, one can show that uh, the uh, thing that is written over here is nothing but f x comma x dot. So, that is shown over here uh, with the help of uh, this derivation. If we look at uh, the equation, we are writing down the equation in this particular form that is a bar y x x dot is written as f x dot divided by f y. Now, if I take omega n square f x comma x dot divided by f y. Uh, that is the definition of your f bar y. So, in place of f bar y, we are substituting f x comma x dot divided by f y and uh, then uh, divided by uh, x y. Now, if I uh, divide it by x y, then the x y automatically goes up over here. So, in the uh, denominator, we have f y by x y. Since f y by x y will be the stiffness, that is how the elastic stiffness is defined. f y is the yield displacement and x y is the uh, yeah, yield force and x y is the x yield displacement. Uh, then uh, f y by x y would give the value of k. So, uh, this is replaced by a value of k. So, one can write down omega n square f x comma x dot divided by k. Since uh, k by m is equal to omega n square, then this turns out to be f x comma x dot divided by m. So, this entire expression that we have taken, thus this extent entire expression uh, is simply is equal to f x comma x dot divided by m that is what we should have written over here uh, because we have divided all through by m uh, and m on this side 
uh, therefore cancels out and uh, the generalized uh, force resistive force restoring force is given by a function um, general function of x and x dot divided by m. So, uh, we deliberately replace this uh, by this particular uh, terms and uh, there is a reason for that. Uh, next we uh, uh, define the value of the mu that is uh, x t over here x t can be written as mu t divided by x y. So, that is the definition of the ductility at any instant of time t that is how much the displacement uh, can take place over and above the yield displacements. So, therefore, x t in this particular equation can be written as mu t into x y. So, once we have uh, this relationship then this can be substituted into the top equation so that the second equation can be simply written in terms of the not x variable, but mu as a variable that is uh, ductility at every instant of time t. So, this becomes mu double dot t plus twice uh, zeta omega n mu dot t plus this particular term x y term will not be there, it will be omega n square f bar mu comma mu dot that will be there and uh, is equal to we write down minus omega n square x double dot g by a y. Now, this a y is uh, defined again in this particular form a y is equal to f y by m or in other words m multiplied by a y that gives the uh, value of f y or one can say this as if it is an yield acceleration a y yield acceleration multiplied by m gives you the yield force and that can be shown to be is equal to omega n square x 0 divided by f bar y. So, this uh, proof again is shown over here in this derivation that is uh, we write down first a y to be is equal to f y by m and this is uh, then uh, manipulated like this f y divided by f 0 multiplied by f 0 by m. Uh, so, this is equivalent to f 0 by m by multiplied by f bar y. Further uh, we write down f 0 by x 0 into x 0 into f bar y divided by m. So, we uh, multiply here by x 0 and divide by x 0. Uh, then uh, it turns out to be now f 0 by x 0 is uh, the stiffness of the elastic system corresponding elastic system. So, this becomes k and this is m. So, k by m becomes omega n square. So, a y can be written as omega n square x 0 multiplied by f bar y. So, that is what uh, is uh, shown here uh, that is uh, a y is equal to omega n square x 0 f bar y. Uh, so, the equation 6.38 equation 6.38 which is written in terms of the ductility as a variable. Uh, so, that is uh, now is a uh, this equation uh, now has the following variables omega n xi and f bar y. So, if we wish to now solve this problem that is equation 6.38 uh, we see that mu depends upon three factors omega n then xi and f bar y uh, because a y will contain an f bar y. So, that is what uh, 
we have shown over here. If we uh, now want to find out the value of mu by solving this equation 6.38, the value of mu obviously would depend upon not only frequency and the damping of the system, but also by f bar y uh, that is uh, inverse of the reduction factor. The time history analysis for the second equation uh, shows the uh, following important things. Uh, first for f bar y is equal to 1 that is the elastic system responses remains within the elastic limit and may be more than that for f bar y uh, less than 1. f bar y less than 1 means the elastoplastic system. For the elastoplastic system that is f bar y, two counteracting effects takes place. First is uh, the decrease of response due to dissipation of energy and increase of response due to decreased equivalent stiffness. As the single degree of freedom system goes into the inelastic range, there is a dissipation of energy because of the hysteresis loop that is formed uh, because of the uh, force def uh, deformation behavior of the system. And second is uh, since the system goes into the, uh, the plastic state or inelastic state, is equivalent stiffness is decreased. Thus, one can see that the first effect tends to reduce the response of the system, the second effect tends to increase the response of the system. Uh, therefore, it is very difficult uh, to say whether in the inelastic range the oscillation uh, will be uh, greater or less than the corresponding elastic system. Uh, the less the value of f bar y, more is the permanent deformation at the end. Uh, that is obvious because uh, of the more value of f bar y means that uh, the system is uh, having more inelastic effect. Uh, therefore, uh, at the end of the earthquake, episode, uh, we, we observed that the system has undergone some permanent deformation element wise uh, as well as, uh, uh, as overall structure. Next uh, mu is known if x m for a f bar y and x 0 can be calculated. So, that is uh, that follows from the relationship that we have shown before that means this uh, important relationship given by 6.36 equation. So, it uh, from this equation one can say that provided we know x m f bar y and x 0 one can calculate the value of uh, mu uh, that is uh, one of the uh, equation uh, emerging out of that equation 6 point or relationship emerging out of equation 6.36 is that x m by x 0 is equal to mu divided by r y and r y is a reduction factor it is nothing but inverse of f bar y. So, this particular relationship is very important and we will use this relationship later you know, for explaining uh, many figures. Effect of uh, time period on mu x m x 0 and f bar y are illustrated. We on this figure we can see that we have uh, the uh, on this ordinate we are plotting x uh, dot 0 divided by g 0 and uh, a, uh, divided by x 0 divided by x g 0 and uh, this is uh, uh, x m divided by x g 0. So, uh, 
uh, any one of them are plotted over here. Uh, that is the normalized uh, displacement, elastic displacement and the normalized uh, uh, value of the maximum uh, displacement for the elastoplastic case. And this is a, uh, on this scale we have got a time period, the scales are logarithmic scales. Uh, the curves are plotted for different uh, values of f bar y uh, or in other words uh, for different reduction factors r y. f bar y is equal to 1 that denotes the elastic case and all other denote the inelastic case or elastoplastic case. We divide uh, this entire range into three uh, ranges that is the displacement sensitive range, uh, this is the acceleration sensitive range and in between we have the velocity sensitive range. That is for large value of t, we call this as a displacement sensitive range, for the low value of t we call this as uh, uh, acceleration sensitive range and in between uh, time periods we call as the velocity sensitive range. Uh, these definitions and the meaning of them are discussed when we are discussing the tripartite uh, plot for the response spectrum. Now from the uh, figure, the following observations can be made. First one for long periods uh, that is uh, in the displacement sensitive zone, we find that Xm is almost is equal to X0 or is equal to xg0 and uh, this uh, the value is independent of a bar y. We, we can see that the here in this particular zone irrespective of the values of a bar y the all the values are more or less the same and uh, here uh, the this is, is equal to 1 that means xm is equal to x0 is equal to x xg0 and therefore in this range the mu simply is equal to ry. In velocity sensitive region xm may be smaller or greater than x0 uh, uh, or greater than uh, the x0 value and is not significantly affected by f bar y. Uh, mu may be smaller or larger than r y. So, we can see that again from the curve, uh, this is the velocity sensitive range uh, that is the in between region from here to here and in this range you, we can see uh, that uh, the well, uh, it, it is not very sensitive again to f bar y uh, and the uh, uh, ductility can be less or more uh, for different values of f bar y. And then this range is the acceleration sensitive range. Here we uh, see uh, some interesting things that is in the acceleration sensitive region xm is uh, always greater than x0, increase with decreasing f bar y and uh, uh, t mu uh, is always greater than r y for shorter period and uh, mu can be also very high. So, this is uh, seen here, uh, one can see that in this particular range the values of x 0 by uh, divided by x g 0 or x m divided by x g 0, uh, they are uh, very sensitive to the values of f bar y for uh, and we can see that different values for different values of f bar y uh, these ratios or the non-dimensional displacement ratios uh, they are widely different and specially uh, this difference increases for shorter time period. Mu value is uh, greater than r y value over here that is uh, one of the important uh, observations. Uh, the xm by uh, xg0 plot is separately drawn over here. So, 
that we have uh, discussed already uh, in the previous curve. Next, uh, we come to with this uh, understanding of the ductility. Uh, we come to the inelastic response spectrum or the definition of the inelastic response spectrum and how one can construct the inelastic response spectrum. Uh, we will see that the inelastic response spectrum and the ductility factor are closely related. In fact, the inelastic response spectrums are drawn for specified values of mu, uh, which is a difficult task, but we will see that how we can obtain these inelastic response spectrums for uh, a given earthquake. Uh, Let us first uh, try to define the inelastic response spectrum. Uh, dy that is the displacement response spectrum or displacement inelastic response spectrum is simply is equal to xy. That is uh, the if we plot xy that is the yield displacement over entire time uh, period then we will get the displacement inelastic response spectrum. Similarly, the velocity inelastic response spectrum or pseudo velocity inelastic response spectrum uh, is defined as omega n times x y. And the way we did uh, for the pseudo velocity spectrum in the case of uh, the elastic response spectrum and uh, acceleration inelastic response spectrum is equal to omega n square into x y that is the displacement inelastic response spectrum is multiplied by omega n square like we have done in the case of the elastic response spectrum. So, the plot of these quantities can be uh, made against uh, T n and that would uh, give us the elastic response spectrum. Uh, we can see that because of the relationship that holds good between dy, vy and ay, uh, they can be plotted in a tripartite plot like the elastic response spectrum. So, that is a uh, very advantageous thing uh, because uh, we will see later that uh, if we uh, know the elastic response spectrum of a single degree of freedom system drawn on a tripartite plot. Uh, then from that one can obtain inelastic response spectrum for different uh, values of the ductility factor mu. For a fixed value of mu and j plots of dy, vy and ay against tm are the inelastic spectra or ductility spectra and they can be plotted in a tripartite plot that is what I told you. So, here the parameters are that the mu and xi these are the two parameters which control the inelastic response spectrum as against the elastic response spectrum where we do not have the concept of mu attached to the spectrum only we have the damping ratio xi attached to the spectrum. Uh, however, mu is equal to 1 and for that if we plot the uh, spectrum then it will automatically become the elastic response spectrum. The yield strength of the elastoplastic system uh, can be written as f y is equal to m into a y uh, that is uh, the yield acceleration multiplied by mass uh, that we have described before. Yield strength for a specified uh, mu is difficult to obtain, but reverse is possible by interpolation technique. So, that is a, a very important uh, statement. Uh, we want to define the uh, response spectrum for a specified value of mu. However, it is uh, very difficult to find out uh, what is the yield strength for a specified value of mu. But the reverse thing can be done because of the equation that uh, we had formed 
before and that was the intent of writing down 6.38 equation that is converting the x x dot variables into mu mu dot variables. If we solve this equation for different values of a y or different values of f bar y, then these for different values of f bar y we can get different values of mu. So, that is why we have converted 6.37 equation into the form of equation 6.38. So, for uh, the yield strength uh, is known uh, provided f bar y is known because f bar y is defined as uh, f f0 divided by fy we have seen before. Therefore, the yield strength can be immediately obtained provided the value of the mu is known. So, what we do is that uh, we go for an interpolation technique and an iteration for a given set of uh, Tn and xi we obtain the responses for the elastoplastic system for a number of f bar y values. That is we solve the equation 6.38 for different values of f bar y and uh, find out the values of the mu. The each solution gives a value of mu and f0 is given is equal to k into x0, x0 is the maximum displacement of the elastic system that means the same equation can be solved also uh, considering it to be a uh, absolutely elastic system. So, the for the same earthquake one can solve the single degree of freedom system considering as if it is a elastic system. So, that will give us the value of x0 and correspondingly one can find out f0. From the set of the values of f bar and mu, find the desired mu and the corresponding f bar y. So, if we have a number of combinations of f bar and uh, mu, from that one can find out the desired value of mu. Say for mu is equal to 2 or 3 or 4, what will be the corresponding interpolated values of f bar y. Then what we do that uh, that interpolated value of f bar y and the mu this interpolated value of f bar y now uh, is used in the equation 6.38 and it is solved and the value of mu is obtained. And if we find that the value of mu that we have interpolated and the value of mu that we are obtaining from equation 6.38 if they are same. Uh, then uh, we say that a convergence has taken place. Otherwise, what we do we, through iterative process, we find out the values of f bar y and mu. So, through some iteration process, uh, one can get a value of f bar y corresponding to a given mu value. So, once we know that, then it is possible for us to obtain the values of the x y, then a y and uh, the uh, d y and uh, the v y or, or v. So, uh, the inelastic acceleration, inelastic displacement, inelastic velocity, they can be obtained provided we know the value of in displacement and to know the value of yield displacement, we must know the yield strength and to know the yield strength, we must know the value of f bar y. So, uh, uh, what we do is that uh, for different values of the time period T n, uh, we repeat uh, these entire exercise and we plot the ductility spectrum. So, a ductility spectrum which is the acceleration ductility spectrum is shown over here. It is uh, not m, it will be is equal to mu. So, uh, for mu is equal to 1, that means this is the elastic response spectrum. 
So, mu is equal to 1.5, mu is equal to 2, mu is equal to 4, mu is equal to 8. Uh, we can see the accelerations or inelastic accelerations uh, and these uh, inelastic accelerations for different values of the mu value is, uh, is plotted here and one can see that for higher values of mu, the value of the spectral acceleration is drastically reduced compared to the elastic response spectrum. So, as the system goes into the inelastic range, and the effective force that is coming onto the system gets reduced. From the uh, ductility spectrum, yield strength to limit mu for a given set of Tm, Tn and xi can be obtained. So, that we can see over here in this particular curve, the f bar y and Tn that is uh, plotted over here uh, for different uh, values of the uh, mu. So, they are mu is equal to 1.5, mu is equal to 2, this is not m. So, they will be all mu equal to 1.5, 1, 2, 4, uh, 6, 10, so on. And for this, we have these curves plotted, and these curves are nothing but f bar y plotted against uh, Tn. And uh, that is the uh, aim that we had. So, for a given value of mu, uh, we can find out what is the value of f bar y. So, once we uh, do that, uh, then you take any time period and for a specified value of mu, uh, one can immediately get the value of f bar y. And once we get the value of f bar y, then from there we can get the value of f y and once we know the value of f y, we can get the value of x y. And uh, once we know the value of x y, then uh, the inelastic response spectrums are defined because the displacement in elastic response spectrum will be equal to x y simply. The velocity in elastic spectrum will be x y multiplied by omega n and uh, the uh, inelastic acceleration response spectrum will be equal to omega n square multiplied by x y or d y. So, that is how we finally obtain uh, the uh, value of the or, or finally plot the spectrums, inelastic spectrums for given values of mu. So, let me summarize here what we do and uh, then uh, we will proceed with it for constructing the values of, of the constructing the inelastic response spectrum. So, uh, what we have done over here is that uh, we have essentially solved equation 6.38 for different uh, values of uh, f bar y assumed and each f bar y value provided a, a value of mu and that is how one can have a collection or a collection of the combination of f bar y and mu one uh, for a particular time period T n and xi. Once uh, we have that, then from there uh, we say we are wanting to construct uh, the response spectrum, inelastic response for spectrum for mu is equal to 2. So, so we find out uh, from interpolation what is the value of f bar y corresponding to the value of mu is equal to 2 from the set of values that we have uh, got after the analysis. Once we know the value of f bar y, then that a, from that f bar y, one can find out the value of f y and once we know the value of f y, uh, then one can value or know the value of x y and inelastic response uh, spectrum ordinate for that particular T n and xi combination is known. So, that is how the inelastic response spectrums are often. Mm -hmm.